Hey everybody, today in my kitchen I am making homemade chapstick. This is something that I love to do and I've been doing for years and years and years. At this point, I like to try to make it in as big of batches as can last me at least a year. I love doing this, but sometimes I drag my feet when I get low on my chapstick and it takes me a long time to actually get it made. So ever since I started doing it in what can it easily last us a year, it's been working really, really well. So my goal today is to make what will last us at least a year, if not closer to two, which is how long I have had our current batch. Actually, it's probably more like a year and a half but that's what we're gonna do today. It's a super simple recipe. All it has is olive oil, shea butter, aniline, and beeswax. Some of these supplies can seem kind of pricey to begin with, but once you get them, they last so long. Leading up to this video, I was looking at my beeswax and I noticed that I don't have a lot left, but I definitely have enough to get through my chapstick. I'm also gonna be making this hand salve that I love and swear by. Now that, I'm really not sure if I have enough. I definitely have enough to make some, but I wanna to try to make enough to last a year of that as well. That will be a video coming out soon, but I do wanna wait for my beeswax so I know I have enough. Now, what is left of this beeswax, I bought this as a one pound block, and there were two, I bought two of them. This is what is left. I looked back in my search history to see if I could find the exact same product that I purchased way back when, and it was in 2012. I make homemade chapstick, hand salves, and two pounds of beeswax as a block has lasted me almost 10 years. I think part of why the beeswax lasts so long is because I grate it up. And when I measure it, I definitely squeeze it to compact it similar to brown sugar. But unlike shea butter, which is just sort of like a scoop, this is shaved, and so there is a lot more air involved there. Now, this is my shea butter, and it comes in usually like an inside bag and then an outside bag to kind of protect it a little bit. And then my lanolin, there's a couple different kinds. I have this one right now and I have another one too. And I'm trying to remember the name of it, but I actually prefer the other one for just like plain use. It's, it's a lot thicker, but just a little bit of lanolin in chapstick really makes a big difference. And as far as equipment goes, I have dedicated equipment that I use every single time I make my chapstick. I didn't used to have a dedicated pot, but now I do because I kind of torched the bottom of this one. So now that is my chapstick. That is my chapstick kettle. I have a jar dedicated to it. It's not a canning jar technically. There's no brand on the side. It's like an older jar that these you shouldn't, these you should not um, pressure can with. And I've tried to pare down all my canning jars to the ones that I know for sure that I can do either or water bath canning or pressure canning. So I thought this is one that I'm not sure about. So I will dedicate this one to all of these types of projects. I have just a chopstick that I use for stirring. And then I have my empty, empty chapstick tubes and I did recently get some more, but I'm almost out of this. I think I have maybe 15 in here. And then the last piece of equipment that I have is this little dropper that is actually from an infant's ibuprofen container. And this works really well to be able to suck up the hot liquid and carefully pour it into the bottles without any spilling. I haven't had any sort of domino catastrophic event, but I probably jinxed it and that might happen today. So I always make sure that I'm really careful, but this just helps me be more precise when I'm moving the liquid over from my jar to the containers. So in order to start the process, you, we need to put some water in this kettle. This water will not be at a rolling rough boil. It's meant to just create a nice warm environment for all of the ingredients to melt together. And periodically stirring is all that it takes. And then once those ingredients melt down, then we transfer them with that dropper over into the tubes, let the tubes cool down, cap them, and store them until you need them. So let's just get straight to it. I'm gonna get the water in my pan, get that warmed up, and I'm gonna start preparing the ingredients. You do not need a super large amount of water in this kettle. I have about an inch, but you can go even less. If you have a half pint jar or something smaller than this, you're definitely gonna to wanna to put less water in your in your pan. Um, you don't want the jar to float up and be moving around a bunch. You just want enough in there so that it's providing a nice warm environment for that jar. Now, I am going to share with you my super coveted chapstick recipe that I have refined. I have had a lot of iterations of my homemade chapstick and some of it has, has ha somehow had more grainy texture. That was really weird when that happened one time. Um, but there's been, some of them have been a little too 
uh, not enough beeswax, so they get really mushy. This one definitely gets soft, but as long as it doesn't get super hot, it stays pretty good. Um, another another ingredient that I don't have here today that I have previously used, but I've sort of gotten away from using is argan oil. That can be really good for skin. And so if you ever wanted to add that, that would be just like a half a teaspoon for each of these recipes. I used to use my shredder, but I find that I can just rough chop it with a knife and it actually turns out really, really good like that. We use a lot of chapstick in our home. I have always been a chapstick lover, but I really like a natural product too. So that's why I like making it on my own. And as long as these are naturally made products and I know what's in them, I feel okay using them liberally. liberally. Our whole family uses it. Our, my kids, I don't feel, I don't feel, um, I don't feel bad about any of the ingredients that are in there. And sometimes if my hand salve isn't readily accessible or we're in the car somewhere, but I have chapstick, sometimes that goes on our hands. So it can be sort of like an all purpose type of thing. That also is why we use so much. At least that's the story I'm going to stick with. So I'm going to go ahead and get this chopped up. I probably should use a cutting board. Okay, I think we have enough rough chopped. This is kind of how mine looks. When it's grated, it's a lot finer. There are some bigger like chunks like that in here. And I think that that is gonna be just fine. Okay, so that's two batches. Four tablespoons. The reason I like having a dedicated pot is because sometimes when I'm putting the beeswax in here, a little gets in the water and can make kind of a mess of the pot itself. And now that I have this pot that I just use all the time, I don't worry about those little flecks that get in there. I just put in regular olive oil but if you've watched my seed videos you will know that I am going to be growing calendula this year and this is one of the things that I am super excited to make with calendula infused olive oil just continuing to stir this as it's melting down I have my little chopstick I have my little chopstick stir stick and it's getting nice and melty this is almost ready to go it just looks like there's some the final chunks that would have been bigger pieces of beeswax are just finishing off melting. Okay, this is completely done. All of the little bits are completely melted. So now we'll take the dropper and get our tubes filled. I'm actually going to keep my jar in my hot water so that that liquid that has melted stays as cool as possible because if it does come off the heat it does start to harden and that makes it much harder to get into these tubes and it happens actually really quickly so I'm just going to leave it on my stove while I'm filling these and see how let's let's see how many we can get this can be kind of a tedious process but it is worth it and if I only have to do it once a year it's definitely worth it and anything that I spill, of course, I just clean up when I'm done. So I'm not too concerned if I spill a little bit here and there. You'll notice that as the things cool down, there's a dimple right in the middle. And if you want, you can go back and just kind of fill in those little dimples with a hot drop, couple drops. Did I not say that I jinxed myself? I've never had a tube tip over, ever. Oh my gosh, look at me go. I'm definitely getting into I was just about to say 
that I'm getting into a groove. And then this happens again. Well, as you can see, some of these, even though they tipped over, they didn't spill because they had already started to harden. But I seriously can't even believe how many have tipped over. This is, this has literally never happened. But you know what? That's okay. We will just make it work. I can actually scrape off the stuff that has spilled and melt it back down and just fill it back in. There's probably a better process for this. And I feel like I've seen trays that hold the chapstick holders, but I guess I've always thought, well, why would you need one? I, I guess if I'm careful, I can just take care of it. But I'm living proof that perhaps those trays would be a good idea. Okay, I decided to do away with using the tray. I figured that I could bump that and that would potentially shift things again. So I decided, you know what, <laughs> let's just, let's just not. And um, so I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these filled up. I can already tell that this is going to be plenty for us for the next year. I so far have 26 tubes. I'm just reheating the last little bit of liquid in addition to the stuff that I scraped off the pan that spilled. And we'll go ahead and get these filled in. I'm going to let them cool down completely before I put the caps back on. Also, this seems kind of strange, but if the chapstick goes through a freezing process, it seems to improve the chapstick. So the chapstick that I've noticed have been like maybe in a winter coat or something like that and exposed to like the super cold elements suddenly becomes my favorite chapstick because I love how smooth it is. So there may be something to putting these in the freezer or if it's cold, just putting them outside overnight and letting them get frozen and then bring them back in. So these are the last three tubes that we had for my last batch. We're almost completely out. And you can kind of see what it looks like when they're done. Sometimes they have that little dimple there, sometimes not, depending on how that gets filled in. And they're filled up to about here. I guess I probably could twist them down but I just kind of fill them at whatever height they are when I get them. If you enjoyed watching this process video for making chapstick, please give this video a thumbs up. If you want to make sure to catch the hand self making video that'll be coming out in a week or two as well, please subscribe and we will see you soon.